welcome to Co-Opinions. My name is Josh, and today I have Chris with me. Hi, Josh. So Chris came to me and said, Josh, I have a thing I really want to talk about. And I go, I'm always open to ideas. <laughs> and Chris, why don't you take it from here, and I will add in colored commentary as necessary. Well, it's no secret one of my biggest passions is video game music. Mm -hmm. And we recently learned that it was the 50th birthday of video game composer Yoko Shimomura, mm -hmm. who is arguably one of the most prolific video game composers out there. She's up there with Nobuo Yamatsu and Yashinori Mitsuda. She has done a lot of work with a lot of games that I grew up with. We're talking going all the way back to, say, Street Fighter II, Super Mario RPG, Parasite Eve, all the way up to, most recently, Final Fantasy XV. So she's had a pretty long career. And with very high-profile games as well, I was surprised to see such a breadth because a lot of these games I had played, and we're going to get into the specifics, but I mean, everything from Street Fighter 2 all the way up to Xenoblade Chronicles and FF15, that's quite the range. It's just very surprising to see everything that's on her resume. Indeed. So why don't we talk about what her music brought to these games? Because, again, we've listed some, some of the examples, and... There's also games like Kingdom Hearts and Mario and Luigi. Mario and Luigi, I've only played the very first one mm -hmm. back on the GBA. I liked it. I was expecting more Paper Mario, but it was kind of a little different from that compared to what I remember. But it was fun. I don't remember the music too well because I played it so long ago. But I know when she does music, it kind of it, it gets you right in the gut. Like you can feel something with the soundtrack. So Mario and Luigi, this is the only one I think on the list I can speak to more than you. <laughs> right? Yes. I played most of the first one. I'm going to replay it. It came, just came out on the 3DS as a re-release. Yes, yes. But I played the second one all the way through. The third one, Bowser's Inside Story, was amazing. If I would say go back and play any, it'd be that one. And then I played Dream Team as well, the fourth iteration but at that point really the only selling point was the bits of comedy interspersed with really good music but the fourth game dream team was like 40 hours long and it wasn't a well-paced 40 hours like you would go into an area and it would inexplicably take you three hours to get through it it's just very poorly paced but let's get away from that we're talking about the music yes and the music in all of these games was strong enough that it really added to the kind of wacky feel of them. And that's what I really liked about them, was they managed to use the music in such a way that it complemented the game style. Because you're right, they're very different games. Absolutely. But music brings an enormous amount of weight to anything. I mean, if you play any game with it on mute, it's not the same game at all. And some of these games had truly iconic music to it. We'll go back. Street Fighter 2. I'm not sure that Guile's theme has ever been more covered. <laughs> People would know that theme not even have played the game. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, it's that song that goes with everything. Absolutely. It's really impressive that one person put out all the music for Street Fighter 2 because there's such a breadth of different sound in there. And you almost get the characterization of the people just through their sound design. So there is a Street Fighter 20th anniversary album, I think. And it was amazing how even 20 years later, these melodies and sounds are still so absolutely ingrained that it's just synonymous with when you think... When you think Ken, you automatically know what that song is. Yep. So, I, it's just amazing to me. Well, that, to me, that's the mark of a great composer. Mm -hmm. that you can create a piece that can transcend the test of time. That people will come back to it years, decades later, and instantly know when they hear that tune, everything about the game comes flooding back. And as you said, it has such a broad... Uh, style of music across the soundtrack mm -hmm. that one person come with that having so many different influences that kind of makes me want to go back and listen to the soundtrack again to tell you the truth because <laughs> I think you and I both share this you actually correction 
I know I do. I'm terrible at fighting games. Mm-hmm. I love to try and play them, but I'm just not very good. Street Fighter 2, I think I own like three different copies of. Three out of like the hundred dozen they have. Yeah, I'm not, sh- <laughs> I'm not sure any game has more versions of it than Street Fighter 2. I agree. But I think I mentioned this before we actually started to talk about the games that despite my love of fighting games is one of my favorite genres. The Street Fighter series is not very high on my list. And I really don't have any quality reason for it except for when playing it as a kid. I think it was the control scheme because it had the uh, the quarter circle and half circle move mm-hmm. button combinations. I was a lot more comfortable with the double tap buttons configurations of like Mortal Kombat and mm-hmm. Killer Instinct. Which is funny because those games were significantly more violent and had series staples like finishers and things like that. Whereas Street Fighter was literally a brawl till they ran out of stamina and then they fell. You didn't kill them, you just beat them to a pulp. Well, and that, you know, is reflective of the violent person you've become, obviously. Yes, as we talked about beforehand with me killing horses in Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that's a story for another time. Transitioning, some of the other games she did. I didn't even realize she was the person who did the composition behind Super Mario RPG. And we'll only touch on this a little bit because Nick and I talked about Super Mario RPG at length. Yes. uh, An episode I really enjoyed and wish I could have been a part of, but I digress. (laughs) I... You know, after I'm recording these episodes, it's amazing how many people are coming out of the woodwork and going, well, why didn't you have me on for that? (laughs) I didn't... (laughs) Some of... The songs that are relatively synonymous with my childhood. And I'm going to try to separate the idea of it being good versus it being from my childhood, right? (laughs) I know Beware the Forest Mushrooms in and of itself. I mean, I, I bought a metal band's cover album just for that song. (laughs) And it's really just an amazing amazing composition and that is that's one song out of the entire soundtrack i would say that's the most iconic song oh it's hands down of super Mario rpg mm-hmm. but there's so many other beautiful songs in there but when you have that one piece that lures you in mm-hmm. oh my it's, gosh it's amazing how how much that particular song so that song beware the forest mushrooms that plays when you're in which forest I always called it the Rose Forest. It was, yeah. it was one of Rose Town because you had to fight Boyer in there. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, it's where you meet and get Gino. It is. So that r- song really has the sense of exploration and your loss, but it's kind of whimsical. So it really goes hand in hand with this really bizarre situation you're in where you're in the forest maze and the mushrooms that you can collect can just pop up and become enemies. And it's. It's, I wish I had better work. I wish I was more musically inclined that I could say something other than it's a good song. <laughs> but well, it's a little piece, though. I mean, not that I am musically inclined, but I do and listen to all sorts of video game soundtracks. But I keep coming back to Super Mario RPG. I have nothing to say but positive things about it. From the very first thing when you first enter Bowser's Castle and you have the remix mm-hmm. from Super Mario Brothers 3 all the way to the very end when you fight Smithy. Which, speaking of that, did you know, if you get a game over in Super Mario RPG, the music changes. What? Yes. I know. A game over doesn't happen too often, but the music changes. It becomes a different tempo, different instrumentation of the theme that was playing when you died. So, basically, every battle theme really has two themes. And it's not just like a little five or ten second snippet. We're talking like a full several minute soundtrack of that theme. Hmm. Definitely recommend checking it out. Yeah, I'm going to have to check that out after we're done recording because <laughs> I have played that game more times than I can count. Oh, it's and, beautiful. I mean, well, that I might be why I'm not familiar with that because... <laughs> I don't mean, how often do you get a game over in a game? Don't ask why I died, but I did. <laughs> uh, well, you do those weird min-max runs, so... This is true. So, this is true. But anyways, are there? what's the next game that you would like to get to? Uh, one I would like to touch on, Parasite Eve. So I played this game, Mm -hmm. but I played it at a point where I was a cantankerous youngling. So I'm not 100% sure that I could say I remember the soundtrack very well. So I need you to lead the charge on this one. Oh, man. Well, to set the stage, I mean, this is... When it was released, I think it was like 97, 98, it was touted as the cinematic RPG when it was really more like survival horror. Mm Mm-hmm. But... 
uh, had our there was no like survival horror. They <laughs> no. liquefy an entire audience. Yeah, within the first half hour of the game, you've had the entire audiences melted or set on fire. Mm-hmm. You encounter a rat that you watch actually mutate into this monstrosity. And then you fight a killer crocodile in the sewers. And that's all in the first day. In game. Yeah, but, that game goes to an interesting place. But tell <laughs> about the music. What about the music. She was all over the place with this. I mean, we had influences. We had piano arrangements, like of Aya's theme. We had orchestral arrangements. Um, one of the track names, Influence of Deep, which is when you encounter Eve. It has, uh, I forget the woman's name, but there is a vocalist who provides like an aria. She's just singing in notes and tone, not actual lyrics. Hmm. And then it drives into a driving beat where it's got percussion, but not just like orchestral percussion, but almost a kind of electronica. So, yeah, she's all over the place with it. But it's a beautiful soundtrack. I love that tune. I love all the music in this game. But probably one of the most significant themes for me. And it's really just... Just thought the battle was real special. There's a theme that plays when Aya is out investigating. Mm -hmm. Kind of have, like, the daytime where you're out investigating, okay, what's going on? Who's Eve? Where is the next clue? And then there's, like, the evening when you actually go into the dungeon that you're supposed to go through for that day. But the exploration theme during the day, I really like it. It's kind of soft, kind of melodic. Um, it'd be a great example to tune it into the episode here, but that's not something we can really do. But We're not that fancy no. yet. But check out the soundtrack. More importantly, elements of that soundtrack show up in later games. And I believe like. that Yokushu Moore is probably the most egregious example of this, where she'll do a track in one game, mm-hmm. and then she'll do a remix or an homage to it in a future game. Best example I can think of, um, the boss theme, Plosive Attack, in Parasite Eve. Mm-hmm. A remix of it shows up again in Legend of Mana. Huh. <laughs> Which is another game I want to touch on because I really feel out of all the games that I played before and after that game's release, it was when I played Legend of Mana that I really realized who Yoko Shimomura was and became a fan of her as a composer, as opposed to just being, I love the music in that game. No, I love Yoko Shimomura's compositions in this game it is interesting when you identify why there's such a similar thread you feel when you're listening to these things i know when i was really really young i okay it's dumb to say this out loud i'm like man i really like the music in these final fantasy games i bet they got some good dudes working on that like oh (laughs) hmm so why don't you go ahead and talk about legend of mana was it this one i have no familiarity with I could probably take up the entire episode talking about Legend of Mana. Um, this other Mana series, it was the next game that we got in the West after mm-hmm. Secret of Mana, which is probably one of my favorite games. If there's mm-hmm. a list of games that I wish to be buried with when I die, Secret of Mana is on that list. Not Legend of Mana, despite the fact that I love Legend of Mana. What? What's with the air quotes under Secret uh, Buried With? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't run this one by your family, I assume. Oh, well, that's a topic for another time, but I have okay. a letter of instruction about what to do with my video games. <laughs> yeah, mine should just burn my house down. <laughs> but that's, we're getting on to a different topic. <laughs> Tell me what exactly it was about Legend of Mana. Well, in Legend of Mana, this is a game that again, has a soundtrack that covers the gamut. We've got orchestral themes, we've got driving hard rock themes, we've got Hmm. melodic jazz themes. We're not even talking about boss fires. We're talking about just like themes for, oh, I'm going to go explore this cavern, or oh, I'm visiting this town that's in the cliff of this mountain versus this town that's by the shore. Hmm. Um, As I mentioned earlier in Parasite Eve, there was the boss theme. There's Mm -hmm. another boss theme in Legend of Mana. I think the original name is called Bedite Orbit. That theme... Just listen to, like, the first minute of it. You swear it's a ripoff of the boss theme from Parasite Eve. And when I first heard this, like, I wonder the same person did it. And that's when I found out it was Okushima Mora. And then I started listening to more stuff by her. And I'm like, man, she is amazing. She's got the chops. Yes. But speaking of Legend of Mana, though, I said Secret of Mana is my favorite game of the series. Mm -hmm. But Legend of Mana's soundtrack really emoted with me. Mm -hmm. There are times where I would just hear the initial melody and I'll instantly think about what was going on in the game at the time, and it was tied to the emotion I felt. Hmm. During one of the three storylines, there's three main storylines you have to complete before you can beat the game. There's the Jumi quest, which is a race of people who are stones. Yes, kind of hmm. like Steven Universe. 
but mm. not quite so mature. Uh, there is the dragoon side quest where you have to deal with dragons of the underworld. And then there is the faithful quest, as I call it, which features four friends. And depending on who you side with, they could all die because of your involvement. Wow. Yes. This is not a very friendly game, despite the fact they have a colorful intro. But huh. in the Jumi quest, there's the city. The Jumi city has two themes. There's the theme before, when it's kind of in desolation of despair, and the theme after, when you save the day and restore the Jumis. Um, track is called City of Flickering Destruction. That's hmm. the theme that plays beforehand. It is almost a depressing track. It's called the City of Flickering Destruction. What did you expect? <laughs> Very true. Who would have thought this would be a bummer? Well, I know, right? But it's a beautiful track. I swear to God. Even if you haven't played the game, just check it out. It's got this haunting piano melody that leads off. Well, it kind of makes me think of the Dark World theme from FF6. Mm. A world of are Ruin. You, world of Ruin. Are you referring to before or after you get the Falcon? Mm, before. Yes. I have a story about that one. Okay. I never really cared for that theme at first. Really? Until I went and saw Dear Friends, the concert in St. Louis. And no oh, way Matsu himself yeah. came out. Because he went organ. to the first day and we went to the second yes, day. Yes, missed. <laughs> when he got on the organ, belted that theme out, and I was moved almost to tears. Oh, that was a... yeah. Uh, I was, was blown away. It was not a feel-good time, no. that's for sure. <laughs> and It was amazing. But ever since then... I've been a fan of that track now. Hmm. Also, it's funny that after he played, he sat down six seats away from me in the same wow. row as me. But I could not get his attention, so I missed <laughs> out on getting a chance to talk to Mr. Uematsu. No, you've seen my picture, right? <laughs> oh, of course. Of course you have. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that was not a cheap picture. Don't... Mm-mm. No. I know. I, I was like, I appreciate it. I'm a little jealous, but... But anyways, anything else about Legend of Mana soundtrack? That's a... It's a... Sig- Scene that a lot of people, I think, can relate to. So, as I mentioned beforehand, there's a track in Parasite Eve that's featured in Legend of Mana. Mm-hmm. There's a track in Legend of Mana that she borrows and applies to a future game. I don't know if you want to jump into it yet. Which game? Xenoblade Chronicle. Actually, I'm glad we went there because that was one of the games from the Wii that whenever I couldn't think of something to listen to at work, I would just boot up the Xenoblade Chronicles soundtrack oh. because she did she did all of it, I assume. She and three other people worked on it. It was a team. Okay. But there was probably about a dozen tracks that she either worked on solely or had primary production credit. Uh, Gower Plains, is that how you pronounce uh, it? I forget how you pronounce it. Gower Plains, she was involved with, but she wasn't the main composer of it. She was the oh, main okay. composer of Colony 9. Nine. So the first town you are part of that okay. show comes from the day and night team theme with that uh, Colony Six's theme, um, one of the other field themes I can't remember which one it is, and the theme that calls back to Legend of Mana, Time to Fight, the original ba- or battle theme. Oh, is that the is it the battle theme or the we're in over our head theme? No, the regular battle theme. Okay. You run in, you get the first strike. It's just a regular rabbit. Not talking that badass theme where the rabbit ends up being that rabbit from Monty Python. Oh, no. And you get wrecked. <laughs> Why is this rabbit so big? <laughs> do, 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 do. Anyways. So one of my favorite battle themes of all time. It's is a that really theme. good It is theme. a rocking theme. But the original battle theme is almost verbatim a callback to uh, one of the field themes from Legend of Mana. Hmm. The simplest way I can think of it, one of the first areas you go to in Legend of Mana is called uh, Luyan Highway. It's like one of the first places you unlock. The general theme there, slightly remixed, is the battle theme used in Xenoblade Chronicles. So do you think that since noticing all these different... Is it an homage if it's your own work or just a reference? I don't know because I... Again, I'm not a video game composer. Right. And it's like, I, <laughs> on the one hand, I love it because, like, great. It was a beautiful theme. I'm glad it's called back, which is why I like the way she does it because I've only listed a handful of examples. Someone who's really more egregious with it is Nobuo Uematsu, mm-hmm. particularly in Final Fantasy. Well, but that kind of makes sense in Final Fantasy because the whole, like, same idea. But that's so you like it how she does it, yes. not how Nobuo does it. You can say no. <laughs> mostly yes, but not really, because I don't want to say I'm hating on Noematsu. I am definitely not. Okay. But the cave theme from Final Fantasy IV is used again in Final Fantasy V and is slightly remixed again in Final Fantasy VI. Sephiroth's theme that we all know from Final mm-hmm. Fantasy VII, 
first appeared in Final Fantasy V, almost note for note. Well, that's because nobody liked Final Fantasy V. That's why I said it. I will throw down. I hated that game when I first played it, when it first came out on the PS1. Mm Mm-hmm. Then I played it again like five years later. It's one of my favorite games. I will never play it again because oh. it's garbage. X Death is a terrible oh. villain. Get to City. I will fight you with Bards we and show you. Throw down. Yes. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Getting back on track, though. <laughs> so, can you think of any other composers that utilize this idea the way she does? Really, those are the two ones I can think of top of my head. Mm-hmm. Um, another one that kind of does it is. Uh, Shogi Maguro, who does a lot of Shin Megami Tensei soundtracks. Mm, and I have Taito no familiarity. Prasada. The thing, though, there is that when he redoes a theme, it's on purpose. Because ah. a lot of those games are interconnected. Yeah. Where, oh, you're, well, you're in um, the Demon Summoning Room. It's going to be that theme. Hmm. And so that's going to show up regardless of what game you're playing. Because that's the theme for that. That makes sense. I respect sense. that. That's yeah. not the case here where it's like, oh... I was traveling in this wilderness in Legend of Mana, and now that theme is being used as a boss fight. So <laughs> that's kind of more of a homage. That's okay. a bit of a difference there. All right, that but makes else. sense. Outside of that, though, I really can't think of anyone else who does. I'm sure there are plenty others. It's just I can't think of them right now. Right. It's just that Yoko Shinomura is the one that I think of who does it, and I think of it favorably. Makes sense. So is there anything else you wanted to talk about about Xenoblade Chronicles? Because there's two more games I see on this list. Well, I'm sure you have even more than that. Possibly. Only thing I want to say is Xenoblade Chronicles, one of my most favorite pieces of music, and I don't think she was directly involved in it, was uh, Satoru Marsh. It's probably about a third of the way through the game. It was an 80-hour game for me. That means nothing to me. My hours were over 200 because I spent about 40 of them just hanging out in Satoru Marsh at night listening to the theme at oh, night yeah, you'd while doing that. other things in my life, whether it be working on War Machine or just taking Nerd. Nerd. <laughs> Nerd. Hey, I like my miniatures, damn it. Anyway. <laughs> you, that's why you have three kids, right? Well, they are my miniatures. There you go. <laughs> Zing. Love you, kids. hey yo. <laughs> but that theme, beautiful piece. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece. It really captures the essence of what's going on and where you are in this. At daytime, looks like this horrible marshland but at night when sun sets trees uh, bioluminesce up and it becomes like a whole different ecosystem hmm. it's beautiful i would just sit there and just look around just taking in the scenery of this game oh yeah i know and that's why i had 200 hours to be an 80 hour game uh, yeah <laughs> well i know that some other people we knew sunk well over 100 and beat everything but all the super bosses so uh, yeah but The other significant game I think we should touch on, because we've talked about FF15 before, and some of those tracks, a lot of those tracks are truly outstanding. But we've talked about the game before, and there's another significant series I think we should touch on, which would be Kingdom Hearts. Yes. Because she's done all of them, more or less. I know she did all of it for, I want to say, the first game, and definitely for the third game that's coming out. And the second game, I know she did that, (laughs) and... She also did a fragmentary passage, which at this point they're up to like 10 games, even though there's been, I don't know how many re-releases and bumbles up. I mean, are we at, to, oh, are yeah. we at Kingdom Hearts 2.8999 yet? What I'm waiting for is for them to bundle 1.5, 2.5, and 2.8 into 2.9 before 3 comes out. Yes, 2.9 EX Final is what it's going to be called. Oh my word, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but one of the things that I personally believe help the series really get a lot of motivation is the fact that not only did it have a really novel concept of combining square characters and Disney characters, but the music was outstanding. The highest point of that series for me by far. Mm -hmm. Especially going back and replaying it because I got 1.5 HD and 2.5 HD. As do I. The music is the strongest part. (laughs) You will get no argument from me on that one. Yeah, uh, (laughs) those have not aged great. No, I've tried playing them again. Uh, True confession, I have yet to beat any Kingdom Hearts game, despite probably starting and restarting more than any other game series I've played. At this point, I'm waiting for my son to get just a little bit better (laughs) at gaming and then let him have at it and kind of watch him play and get my experience vicariously through him. (laughs) Makes sense. But the first game, I mean, 
for a while. Did she actually write or compose Simple and Clean? Was that her or was that you taught? Uh, I don't know. That's something we should be able to look up. <laughs> yeah. All right. One second. One second. So, <laughs> turns out that that was actually entirely Hikaru Yuta. Indeed. So, that being said, the rest of the music in that game was super good. Yes. Yes, it was. That's not to say it, should, it was overshadowed by Simple and Clean, <laughs> but the rest of it was still very solid music. Even in the second game, even in Birth by Sleep. I played a lot of those games. My enthusiasm is not as high as it used to be. <laughs> if they'd released this game back in 2012, I would have probably been all over it. Probably. <laughs> but well, I would defer to you on that one as my experience with Kingdom Hearts is the mainline series. Well, I think I've only played like what came with 1.5 <laughs> in terms of anything outside of the main game. <laughs> so I beat the first one. I did not get through Chain of Memories. Uh, I beat the second one. I beat 358 over 2. And the music, especially in games like 358 over 2, which I'm praying that she did the composition for now that I say it out loud, I really <laughs> think she did. I know she was involved in it because she was involved in every Kingdom Hearts game. Then, yeah. That probably would have been one of the stronger points because there's some very emotional bits near the end that without a good scoring to it, there is no possible way I would have cared at all. Because 358 over 2 gives you the backstory of one of the characters they introduced for three hours in Kingdom Hearts 2. So you're going into it thinking, I don't think I'm going to care like at all. Right. But... Because of how well all the accompanying music is, the battle themes are super solid, the boss themes are really good, and a lot like the Twilight Town soundtrack, and I cannot remember the name of the other hub town, but the music made it so when you're running around doing these repetitive tasks, you didn't want to blow your brains out, <laughs> which is definitely a plus. So, Did she do Hollow Bastion's theme? I think uh, she did. It wouldn't surprise me. Regardless, it was one of my favorite things about the first Kingdom Hearts. Man, you got to Hollow Bastion and you didn't beat the game? No. Man. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. You were at the end. I know. Nice. <laughs> so, I'm glad she's coming back for Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm pro I'm going to buy it regardless. I can him and haul all I want, but I cannot not see it through to the end. I beat dream drop distance i am going to beat this series <laughs> that game sucked by the way i was going to ask you what was your opinion of that i hated it i hated <laughs> it so much but that's neither here nor there that's a whole different conversation but it had good music though right it did have good music it had really good music it didn't have good much else but <laughs> the, uh. mm, so i'm trying to keep us on topic here because I don't want to rant about this now. Yes. So we are coming up real close to having to wrap this up. Chris, since you were the wind in the sails for this one, why don't you go ahead and give us a rundown of what this particular composer has added of value to this undeniably huge component gaming of your life. There are many soundtracks that I've bought and listened to mm -hmm. because it had her name on it, even wow. before I played the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really can't think of what else I've done that with. Even the great Psycho Imatsu. I know their names. I know their games. But just something about seeing her name as, oh, she is involved in this. Instantly, I'm going to be looking into it. Probably going to buy it. Probably even going to buy the special soundtracks to it that, that she's done. Dang. Yeah. Well, again, I, I love game music. I feel that it's a significant influence on myself as a gamer, as a young adult growing up. I just cannot sing enough praises for the type of music that she did and what she brought to these games, making them really come alive. As you mentioned earlier, try playing a game with the sound off. Try playing Super Mario RPG with the sound off. <sighs> exactly. Mm -mm, exactly. No. Mm -mm. Try playing Final Fantasy XV with the sound off. Try doing the nope. Titan fight with the sound off. Boo. Boo. She did that theme. <laughs> and that, that was probably the biggest, that's best themes. pretty of awesome, that. actually. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a really strong selling point right there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad that we recorded this. I'm glad that you were able to sing your praises because 
you know, we're not all just all doom and gloom on here. <laughs> so thank you for coming on, Chris. Thank you for having me, Josh. Why don't you jump online and tell us what you thought about this composer? Who are some of your favorite composers? What is the favorite game soundtrack that jumps out at you? Let us know online. But until next time, my name is Josh, and this is Co-Opinions. Co-Opinions.